people, you know, 40 years ago were locked in isolated areas, what we called timeout rooms. Um, we used everything from roller boards to four-way restraints to um, uh, restraint chairs that were in the middle of an open area where other people were around them. So not only were they restrained, but they, you know, it was undignified to be out there, maybe even unsafe if, uh, you know, another resident would attack them or something. Um, chemical restraints, you know, was prevalent. Uh, medication authorized for other than a, a psychiatric diagnosis. There were some folks, two ladies that I can think of, that started at Newcastle when they were maybe five, six, seven years old with heavy doses of psychotropic medications and they were not improved when they were in central 20, 30 years later. We had one individual, I believe he's in a waiver now, um, who was smart enough to kind of get out of the straitjacket and escape and so he would be running across grounds with, you know, the straps kind of flapping. Um, <clears throat> the ammonia sprays were used, especially on the children's units, and I, I remember being appalled about that even then. But the psychologist, of course, would say, well, this is what is needed. The, the straight jackets, we, um, the young man that I'm thinking of and um, had pretty severe self-injurious behaviors. Um, and so that was one of their behavioral methods. Um, of trying to keep him from injuring himself. But he spent a lot of time in that, which, you know, and again, he got smart enough, he could um, undo the straps and get out of the straitjacket, kind of a Houdini thing. And <clears throat> so a lot of his day was spent in restraint, and, and straitjackets are restraint. Your arms are, you're not able to use your arms, that's the idea, so that he couldn't uh, do the self-abusive behaviors. The ammonia spray, and I can remember this pretty vividly, um, and I remember a couple of the psychologists and I were friends, it was simply um, a watered-down um, spray bottle with some ammonia in it, which would be quite aversive. I mean, having ammonia sprayed um, in your face, um, which was where they would spray that, would be pretty aversive. I mean, ammonia's got a terrible smell to it, and then it can be corrosive. And um, again, they this was also before regulations per se. So they would write behavior plans or maybe not even, I mean, staff could just use that when they felt they needed to use it. Um, my understanding was that it had to be some pretty severe behavior. And again, I wasn't, I, did, I worked in an outpatient clinic, so my time on the units was minimal. But you know, it's interesting that when I was on the units, I would see that. So my speculation would be that it was used pretty frequently. And knowing how Newcastle worked, my guess is it was used indiscriminately by staff. It was used whenever they felt maybe they were in danger or the person was uh, not behaving or out of control. <clears throat> So I'm not sure that it was very well organized. I, I like to think that the regulations now within group homes and, and to a lesser extent the waiver regulations really prevent that kind of thing from just being used you know, indiscriminately anytime. But um, the ammonia spray, especially on the children, that was used in the children's units um, more so than the, um, than the adult units. Mm -hmm.